I was going to take the day off of recording today, but OMFG. A Diamondback Mike Dominguez strike zone. All right, I'm getting all these bikes loaded before someone comes and snakes me. I'll see you at the uh, supermarket parking lot, and then we can have a discussion. Well, here we are in a bright, sunny parking lot. That's gonna be great for the video. The last 20 minutes or so have been mildly uncomfortable to say the least. I've already uh, whacked my wrist on this thing. But I will accept that because uh, I'm not even kidding when I say I think this thing might be worth like a G bar. So let's take a closer look. I think the light's a little bit better here. So these are the two run of the mill bikes that we don't really care about so much. I put these bars up so they wouldn't bang into the other bike so much. There's your typical Raleigh Grand Prix. White is not my favorite color for these. Covered with mouse poop. But it's actually in pretty good shape. It'll clean up all right. And then over here, you got your uh, you got your Raleigh Sprite, probably from what, like the mid to late seventies. That is a Sprite, right? Yeah, you can just barely make it out. That's a three-speed, you know, nothing too interesting there. Nice condition, though. Still got the little Raleigh axle caps. But those two things are probably going to just sit in the back of my yard for, you know, the next 102 years, so... I'm not super excited about them. But let's see what else we got, because this is very exciting. I probably shouldn't have found so much stuff today before I found these, but let's get them out and take a look at them, because these three are pretty cool. I guess this is what any suburban driveway would have looked like in 1987-ish. What do you want to look at first? How about this little puppy? That's right, the General. And it says it on here somewhere. The sidekick. I know most people can't read that, but I, I can. Look at that general logo. Look at this brake. That's uh, maximum stopping power. In fact, it's so powerful that when they lock the brake up, the whole fork bent. Yeah. I can't quite figure out what happened with this fork. Probably the kid got pissed and just smashed it on something because... I think the only way you could really achieve that level of damage is to roll down a hill at like 100 miles an hour. Fake mushroom grips. Leechy Tech 3 levers. And this. Nice general pad. I think these handlebars are like eight cents short of the nickel trick. This one would probably work. But I figure on this bike, maybe you flop the fork around and make it into like a chopper. A lot of scraping going on. Kid was probably grinding on a curb or something. It's 
got special design tubing. It's high tensile steel and another lychee brake in the back. Plus your 12 inch mags. So look at that carnage on the fork. There's your general sidekick. What's next? I don't know which Sidekick Pro I like better. I think the Sidekick Pro was uh, an accommodation of the ridiculous notion that somehow these scooters would appeal to professionals. But it does have 14 inch wheels. It has forks with holes. It has freestyle brakes too. Look at those. Let's pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. There's your deck. Another lychee brake. And in the back, there actually are some pegs in the holes. But it looks like this kid liked to grind on something. That peg is just ground through a whole bunch. Now here you got the uh, ACS rotor, which at the time was probably the only rotational device available. And an imitation forklifter stem. Look at that pad though. That's neat. I think these were the lychee imitations of the Tech 6 brake levers. And again, we got fake mushrooms on this like we did on the other one. Those are cool freestyle bars too. Let's see your general logo. Made in Taiwan. I guess that's about it for the Sidekick Pro, the black edition. Let's look at the blue one. All right, the blue one's not that much different. It's just like, do you like black or do you like blue? I don't know. I don't know which one I like better. A little bit scraped up on the fork. You still got your little peg holes, lychee freestyle brakes. 14 inch wheels. There's your head tube logo. ACS rotor. These rotors are probably worth like 50 bucks each. Like if you include the cup. It's got that same pad. It's got the same levers locking Tech sixes, same fake mushrooms. The platform on this is pretty neat though. It's all white. Sidekick Pro graphics, and it looks like they definitely uh, went to town on these pegs. Let's see, what does that say? It says, great. Yeah, I don't think those wheels are great, but... What's it say here? Warning! Warning, this sidekick is not designed or intended for off-road use or freestyle riding. Special design tubing. I, I think that other than this, uh, you know, tube hanging out of the tire in the back and, and general wear, the only real problems with these two are they're just so covered in, uh, like I think this is like mouse droppings. You know, it's in a shed for so long. But that'll come off. All right, these are the, the appetizer though. So let's look at the main course. All right, if you're anything like me, then your eyes would be absolutely bugging out of your head if you see this on the side of the road. Especially because you know you don't have to pay for it. Like if it's at a garage sale, you'd just be wondering how much they're gonna charge, but this is, this bike is no joke. 
It's the Mike Dominguez Strike Zone by Diamondback. And yeah, it came with a chain guard. Look at that tab. But let's see. We got some totally fake mushroom grips. I'm surprised these kids wouldn't have like swapped out the grips after a while. I mean, it looks like they rode the hell out of the bikes. These things, I want to say, are Tech 7 locking levers, which are like... See, they have a two-piece clamp, so you don't have to take the grip off to get them on. I want to say these things are worth like a hundred bucks a set. The stem, I don't know. Can't tell if it has a logo, but it's got like a... It's kind of like a cheap rip off of a hutch stem, but it's sort of tapered under here too, so whatever. You know, you can't have everything. The bars are neat. I mean, first of all, because they say that on them. So anything that says Mike Dominguez is neat, but you know, they're knurled and they got these little holes right here for the brake cables. So that's cool. Now this seat, I don't know what the hell they were thinking there. I mean, my guess is the only person who wants this seat is someone who's trying to restore one of these bikes. And they probably don't even want it. There's your combination lock. All right, seat post clamp. I didn't even know Diamondback had like stamped seat post clamps. That's neat. Here's your ACS rotor, your rotational device. Now up front, we got a mag wheel that's marked Diamondback. I don't know if there's gonna be a manufacturer's marking on this, but it's probably like an OGK. But if you look, it just says Diamondback, which is kind of a stupid place to put it because it's gonna get worn off by the brakes, but. Like I would say these are quality mag wheels now here is the prize, one of the prizes, the Nippon Brake. I mean, that's too legit to quit and it's not like terrible shape. It's not perfect, but. Then you got a uh, Sakai or SR Sprocket, which is pretty interesting in and of itself. And this Tioga disc, I don't know what that's worth. But the cranks, they're not just generic cranks, they're Tioga, and if you look on the other side, they're Task Force. So this is like for a bike where they didn't wanna put three-piece cranks in the budget, but they didn't wanna skimp too much. Then you got your other uh, chain guard thing. Here's your Diamondback trademark, a hole, hole in the dropout. Now out back here, let's pick this thing up and go around. You've got this crazy Suntour roller cam brake, which has die comp pads. And for a while they were doing these roller cam brakes. I think it's before the 990 came out or before the 990 caught on. I don't know if these are gonna even work. Yeah, there's nothing. Like I'm pulling this lever and it's just not budging. But there's so many points where friction can take over in this system that I'm sure a good disassembly and cleaning and lube would help. Now here you have the kickstand. I don't know, I'm not mad at the kickstand, but whatever. And then I wanted to show you what I think is like two of the most unique parts of this bike. First of all, these rear standing, well, three unique parts. First of all, the top standing platform you know, which was ubiquitous and necessary at the time. And then the brake routing is incorporated into that. The fit and finish on that thing is not great, but it's still interesting. And then you got a little DB stamped right here. So that's a touch. Oh, and that's cool. Like, see how the brake kind of comes through the gusset? 
So that's neat. You don't really see those standing platforms too much. Then in the back, you had to have frame standards, but you didn't want them to be like crazy. And if you put on pegs on the back, you could like whack your shin. So not only did they put on frame standards, but they chunked out the little braces here to grip onto your feet. I don't know how much of a difference that would make, but you know, they were, they were trying to be thoughtful, I think. American bottom bracket, I don't know what brand that is. Probably a Tioga though. And then, in my opinion, the most interesting part of this bike would be these front pegs, which are like half hexagonal. Like they're just big enough so you can have fun on them, but they're not so big that they get in the way. So you could, you know, stand here and do your front wheel hops and whatnot. Now this bike, like the other ones, is filthy. It's all covered with uh, a deep crusting of whatever that crap is. I don't know, do I dare try to... Oh, the things that I do for you. <laughs> Look, I'm not licking my thumb a second time. So you get what you get. But yeah, it says Diamondback, so... That turns it from a generic stem into a generic stem with a Diamondback logo on it, so. And then right here, 100% chromoly, so that's not bad. And then right here, you got your Diamondback logo. And as far as the color choices go, I mean, this is what you got in 1987 or 86, so that's, uh, that's about it. Anyway, today I was not gonna make a trash picking video at all but I figured since I had the camera, I would show you these uh, beautiful scores. And I know it's hard to believe if you don't know anything about this stuff, but like the one, two, three, four, like I wouldn't be surprised if collectively the stuff's worth like $1,500. So it's not just like the, the significance of finding a Mike Dominguez strike zone. There's also some, uh, you know, some serious dollar value here, too. So that's it for today. I'll catch you next time. And until then, thanks for watching.